Today's episode, Everlast Plasma Cutter is dead in the water. Somebody send out a lifeboat. Hey, welcome back to the barn. So this video was initially going to be a DIY made from scraps ram press uh, that I was putting together and I went to use my plasma cutter and I got absolutely nothing. It's been about two months since I used it, although I have been using the TIG function on it continuously. I originally purchased this unit uh, three years ago as I was just getting into TIG welding professionally and I absolutely needed a plasma cutter because I didn't own one. And I liked the idea of having a three-in-one machine, which this is a three-in-one. It does uh, high-frequency TIG welding, 60-amp plasma cutting, and it is also a stick welder, and a good stick welder at that. Everything has functioned great for years. I've never had any trouble, but I went to use it, and we're dead in the water. So I wrote to the Everlast Techs, and they sent me some tests to run on the torch because it was having kind of a strange plasticky burning kind of smell, and I don't know. I was hopeful that it was the torch, but we ran through, and we did a continuity test on all the connections. They ran, they told me how to test everything out, and, and the torch checks out so far. Um... So we went back and forth a little bit, and now they have asked me to open the unit and take pictures of all the circuit boards. I've never done that before with this unit, so this will be a first. It's probably in well overdue for a cleaning, although I do take really good care of my welders, and I always keep them covered when I'm not using them. But yeah, this will be a first for me, and if it's a first for you, then let's do it together, and uh, hopefully we'll all learn something. Let's go. Just like to welcome everyone to our summer intern camera person. We're going to have a new camera person for the summer, so we'll give them a big round of applause. Now, you've got four screws in the corner. One, two, three, four, and hopefully remove those, but I, I hope we don't have to remove the air filter. It's most likely we have to, and this whole thing should just pull off. Yeah, tricky buggers. Look, I took one out already, and it's got a screw and some uh, washers. I'm going to back these out real gently. It looks like they're just screwing straight into plastic, so be careful. Get in there, would you? Yeah, okay. Now, on the side panel, we got one, two, three, and come around over here. Thank you. And uh, same one, two, three. And hopefully this should be it and the whole thing should just pull out. I mean, I didn't want to take the air filter off, but it's looking like we're probably going to. And this whole thing should just pull straight back. And then the casing should just come right off the top. Okay, so welcome back. So we did exactly as we said we were gonna do. We removed all the screws that we needed to and Yes, it does turn out that you need to remove your air compressor uh, water filter. And unfortunately, when I pulled this off, I found that this corner, if you get in there, had actually been broken. I don't know how long, heck, it could have been broken from the moment it left the factory. I don't know, because like I said, I've never taken this apart. So, once you get your air compressor filter off, this whole panel just kind of very gently slides off and you can see the gas intake and all this other stuff is contained within the wall of the rear of the welder and so it, it comes off real easily you can just slide it down the cord and it'll dangle there 
And my assumption is, is that if we just pull this direction on the casing, it'll come off. So let's give it a little slide and see what happens. Very gently, I propped it up here on a piece of wood so it could flow really easily. And I'm just gonna pull it. And there it goes. You wanna be really gentle because I assume there's lots of parts that are exposed when you pull this cover off that you could scratch or break or pull apart. And there you have it. Why don't you come down in here and uh, get get a look around. Not too dirty. I would expect it to be a lot dirtier. But there is the welder in all its glory. Come around this side if you don't mind. Right off the bat, I can see a lot of um, dust and dirt was collecting right here. And it looked like it may have had some impact on these coils. You can see how they're kind of worn. And the plastic looks like it might have started to melt. I'm not sure. Maybe that's just age. But, uh, yeah, as far as the Everlast Tech goes, we'll take pictures of all of this. And we'll send it off to them and see what they think. And hopefully they can tell us what's going on. I don't see anything really glaring right now. I don't see anything, like, very obvious. Nothing appears to be blackened or burned. Um, other than this area right here. So... A few moments later, a few minutes later, a few inches later, 12 seconds later, 3 days later, 3 weeks later, many months later, 6 and a half hours later, 1 eternity later, 2000 years later, 328 AM, tomorrow, day 2, day 3. Well, so... After taking the whole welder apart, we did exactly as tech support suggested, and we took pictures of all the circuit boards, everything we could take a picture of we did. We sent that over to them. We did all the things they asked us to do, and I couldn't see anything visually wrong, and neither could the tech support at Everlast. And the, so once I finally submitted all my warranty information and proof of purchase, well, it turns out that I was about 40 days past my warranty. And at that point, tech support pretty much kind of threw their hands up in the air and said, well, there's nothing we can do for you, which was pretty disappointing, but it is what it is. Uh, uh, their last word was that if we wanted to, we could send the welder back to Everlast and they'd, they'd look it over. But I really don't want to do that. And so somewhere between the back and forth, they had suggested that perhaps it was the torch. And I really hope so. So what I did, just to be sure, is I pulled all the guts out of this big vinyl hose just to inspect all the wires, um, the pilot arc, and the uh, trigger switch. So what I did is I just gently slit this rubber tube and attached it to a heavy desk with a clamp. And I just kind of gradually just pulled all the guts out. And unfortunately, you do have to take the whole torch apart to do this. And I found that the trigger, the original trigger switch, I, it would not slide through this tube. So this little circuit board was probably put on after this was all assembled. And I had to cut it off to get all this out. And it's not a big deal because in order to replace the torch, you have to take the circuit board off anyway. Because we're going to have a whole new torch set up that we're going to have to rewire and put in here. Um, I inspected everything. Everything looks good. All the wires check out. I mean, there was some strangeness, just kind of like extra vinyl along the pilot arc. It doesn't look like it melted or anything. There's no pinches. Everything seems intact. And as I said before, I did the continuity tests on everything, just as Everlast suggested. And we got continuity on all our connections. So after I inspected all that, Again, I attached the vinyl to the side of the building here, and I made a little lead wire, taped all this, and then yanked all those guts back through the hose just to make sure that there was nothing wrong in here that I couldn't see. And now we're ready to put this back together. In order to do so, uh, as I often am fond of doing, I guess, I went over to Amazon and just checked out my options because on Everlast website, the lowest model of this AG60 torch that came with this plasma cutter 
is $140 plus shipping. So, uh, if it's not the torch, I'd really not, I'd really rather not spend $150. So, I found this really nice, beefy river well from Amazon. Look at this thing. This thing's huge. It's like twice the size of the old one. Really well made. I haven't opened it up yet. I might save that so we can all look at everything together and uh, put the wires back together. I'd like to do that on camera. But look, it's got this really nice trigger. So we can just do that. The heads are all the same. Uh, I already tested this one out a little bit, but I haven't looked at it too closely. And it comes with this really cool swivel to protect this cable like you'd have on your MIG whip or, um, you know, a little bit higher end unit. So I, I really like this. You know, if it's 22 bucks and it works, why not? This is great. I can't wait to find out. So I'll bring you in here. We'll take a look at this. And we'll put everything back together and fingers crossed, people. Let's hope it was the torch. All right. So the old torch came apart pretty easily. It just had one, two, three, four, five long screws that had bolts in the backside in here. You remove all that. You pull this case off. And what you find inside is torch head trigger. You can see I've already removed these wires and this was just a push button trigger on a circuit board. I'm not an electrician so don't expect any kind of definitions here. The wires inside for the trigger are in my opinion sort of beige, pink, peach, and blue and that travels all the way down that hose and comes out in your pin system. And when I pulled this all apart and I looked in here, see one is the blue wire, two is the peach pink beige wire. On this circuit board, there's absolutely no information unless you speak Chinese and I do not. But there is some writing. And if you understand circuit boards, maybe this would make sense to you. But anyway, that's going to be irrelevant. So what I did, because this trigger is very similar to the trigger on a high-frequency TIG torch, I pulled apart my whole TIG torch. TIG over there. Sorry, TIG. I pulled his trigger apart, and it looks like this is red on TIG, and it's blue, identical. And yes, they're going to the same. So red number is going to pin number two. And blue goes to pin number one. You got seven pins there, I guess. For the pedal, the pedal requires a few more pins. So there's a lot more going on in your high frequency TIG pedal than there is in your trigger. So my theory is, is that when I hook this up to the new torch, which is over here, I took all this apart. It has one, two, three, four, five, six screws that go directly into the casing. There's no nuts, like this one has nuts on the backside. There are no nuts on this one, but the wires are pretty much identical. The heads, almost identical. All I did on the old one is I unscrewed this. So this would have been right directly into there like that. And so for the new torch, we'll just do the same thing. We'll hook that directly up. And then it was sealed in some heat shrink tape. We're just going to use some of our own heat shrink tape or, or high temperature electrical tape. And you'll want to cover all this up because this, I think, is going to be live. This is going to have electricity flowing through it. So the new one has a very different trigger. It's a pull trigger that just kind of sits in here on gravity. And you can see there is writing on this one. And when we flip it over, we can see NC and NO. And what I deduced from taking apart the TIG trigger 
is that NO is the red. Uh, blue actually goes to the COM, C-O-M. And the NC was blank on the TIG trigger. So we're going to try to hook up the red or peach wire. We'll call it red. We're going to hook the red up to an NO. And we're going to hook the blue up to NC. That's the theory anyway. Let's hope it works. Uh, some major differences right away is the old torch had a dedicated screw on pilot arc. And that's what this guy was for. The new one is literally just a flimsy little piece of copper that has been soldered on there. And I might actually add a little extra solder because, boy, that just looks... <laughs> Just kind of sad and pathetic. But this all looks nice, and this is identical, so I'm happy about that. And this new trigger. It's decent enough. I've seen this on some non-pilot arc torches before. This setup. Um, so my hope is that this works. I'm going to put all this back together with the new torch. Hopefully that was useful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. But let's put this back together and uh, let's see if she cuts. Okay, so I pretty much did as I said I was going to do. I connected my pilot arc. And yeah, I know, this isn't fancy. I was a little disappointed I had to even sever this off. This was a nice connection. And on the old one, it had a screw where you could actually screw it on, but that's not gonna work for this. And so I made a really nice tight fit together, blended the wires, tied everything together. I'd like to solder it. Maybe I'll come back and do that later if it all works. Um, I went ahead and reinforced what they, what this torch had, what River Weld sent over. And then I soldered it some more taped everything, put their little sleeve back on, and then taped that even. So, I've connected it to my pilot arc. I connected the hose to the main line, so this is air and uh, plasma. And I did some really high temperature electrical tape, and then I used this nice PVC tape and sealed the whole, heat shrink the whole thing together. Uh, as far as the trigger goes, basically the same thing, like I said. Uh, red was going to NO, blue was going to NC, and those were nicely marked on here, NO, NC, uh, non-operating, not connected, or um, not open, not connected, connected. Anyway, look it up. It's on the internet. Uh, again, I sealed all that, tied the wires together really nice, then high temperature duct taped each individual line, and then high temperature duct taped the whole thing. Now, the trick is, there's not a lot of room in here, but we're going to go ahead and slip all this back together. Try to stuff all our wires down in here real nice and neat so we don't pinch anything and we don't break any connections. And just real quick, since I didn't show you continuity the first time, if you want to test continuity on your continuity meter, what you want to do is set it to somewhere in this little horseshoe shape right in here. And as I understand it, you want to go with 200K. That's what we have it set to. We turn it on. See, it's reading one. In order to test the pilot, you're going to use your pins one and two. I know one of these should be black. They're both red, but it's the only ones that I had that fit right now. But the two ends of your multimeter, Put them in pins one and two, like so. And then all you have to do is pull the trigger. And look at that, zero, zero, zero across the board. That's what you want to see with this particular multimeter, zero, zero, zero. One more time, you'll see some numbers, hold on to it, zero, zero, zero. Continuity, it's good connection. To test the pilot arc, do the same exact thing, get one on there, and touch the other one just to the body here. Zero, zero, zero. That's what you want to see. 
Call it body to pilot arc. Pilot arc. Call it body. Zero, zero, zero. So everything I've done here, everything I've done here should be good and working and functioning properly. And like I said, we just need to put all these guts back inside here. We'll put our top back on. And we should be ready to go. All right, so there you have it. We got our torch. Look at this beefster. Looks great. This feels great in the handle. I really like everything about it. We got it hooked up to the welder, just like it should be. And uh, we're going to run 35 amps just for a test. This is a pretty thin sheet. And it looks great. I mean, it came out really nice. Look at that. Just hope it works. <laughs> so, three, two, one, just for the test fire. Plasma! Yes! All right. So, now for the true test. You know, and a little bit of advice that I think um, is something I've been neglecting for a lot of years is I've always plasma cut at the highest available air pressure. And I think that was a mistake. I don't know if it's ultimately what caused it to fail. But I, it may have had something to do with the, uh, the decay of the original torch. But I don't know. I'm really hopeful with this. So, like I said, 35 amps, and I turn the PSI down to like 30, 35, somewhere in there. And I always usually run around 50, which, in hindsight now, I understand that that was probably a mistake. To It just depends on what you're cutting, honestly. And this is super thin sheet. I don't know. 20 gauge, maybe? 18? Not quite 8th inch, but it's pretty dirty, too. It's pretty nasty material. Just an old piece that I've been welding on for many years. So yeah, here we go. Woo! <sighs> like butter. Like butter. Look at that. Barely any slag. I'm so happy, guys. I've been needing this guy back for a while. I can't wait to get back to work. This kind of slowed everything down. And 22 bucks instead of 130, whatever else it would have cost me in the end to send the whole machine in. You just sometimes you got to start. You got to start somewhere. And just start to diagnose your problems one by one. Sometimes a catastrophic failure isn't necessarily catastrophic. Well, let's hope we get some good hours out of this torch and uh, let's get back to work. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I know I don't always explain everything and I may not be the most knowledgeable person about this stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And maybe you've bought this similar torch and you'd like to say something nice about it or something bad. Uh, for warnings, I'm always willing to listen. Hey, thanks again for watching and stay tuned. we got a lot of stuff coming out. Take care.